Hello guys, it's Ben from Next Gen Gaming Blog here, and today we're going to run through the next firmware update for the PS4, which is version 3.5. Uh, there's some big features, and there's a couple, well, there's one in particular that's not been uh, noticed. So the first one here is a peer offline. Um, you can go through into your settings, uh, into your profile setting rather, and just hit the appear offline button. Ideal if you don't want anybody to see what you're playing, or if you just want to be left alone for a bit. And you'll be able to see in the top corner there, next to my name, there's a little red cross, and now it's back to a blue circle. Uh, so that's the appear offline functionality. Uh, as well as this, Sony have finally listened to us and we've got the ability to see when our friends are online. So if you go into your settings, notifications, and then uh, it takes a couple of seconds, but it loads up. And essentially, we've then got a list of all of our friends that we have here. So you can select them all, you can deselect them all, or you can go through them individually and, and choose who you get notifications from. To be honest, I'm surprised it's taken them this long. Um, but, you know, it's, it's in there now, so we can... Uh, we can all be happy about that one. Okay, next up we have user created events. Obviously events are one way that we can uh, get people to join up together and, and enjoy the game that we want to play. This has been available to publishers for quite a while. Um, obviously here we've got some GHTV ones, we've also got some Final Fantasy ones, but we've also now got the ability to create one yourself. So if you want a tournament with some friends you can just bung this on. Um, essentially name it what you want, put the description on, put a start time on, um, and you can set for how long it goes on for. You can choose the game as well. So if you just want to get together with everybody and you know not necessarily decide on the game you're playing, you can just choose no game. However, there is the option there to choose the game. So if we wanted to play The Division, we can set the event to last for however long we want. I mean, you can play for 12 hours if you like. Um, and of course, you can then choose the number of players. Obviously, in this case, we'd probably select four because The Division. Um, and then, if you want to, you can select a community or a message group. So, you know, if you've got a uh, if you've got a group of players that you, you normally get together with, or if you're a member of a, uh, a community, you can send that message to the community that you're in, and then people will be able to join you on that set time if you want to do that. Moving slightly away from the friends list now into your party, um, you can obviously invite people into your party, and when you do, you've now got an option that says play together. What this essentially does is it looks at the games that people are playing, uh, shows them which it previously did, but it also now allows you to join sessions without going through any you know menus or anything like that. It's quite handy, uh, particularly if you know, you've know you got a party of people and the party's open, there's a spare slot in the game, you don't have to ask people to faff about sending an invite, you can just hit play together, and it'll send you straight to that game session, provided there's space of course. Okay, and there is one final setting that I wanted to talk about. Uh, obviously, we do a lot of uh, video sharing here at MGB. We've also got, this time around, the ability to share your party's audio, which has been missing for quite a while. Uh, if you go to the audio sharing settings here, and you can see at the bottom there we've got share party audio. What this now does is anybody that's enabled their sharing settings to include their audio from the party in a, in a share, It'll basically have them, you know, um, their audio as well. So you'll have reactions and, and all sorts when something cool happens, which you know should hopefully be pretty fun. Uh, we've obviously got, you know, two different places to go to that. So it's uh, it's a much requested feature from from my point of view anyway. We've had a lot of instances. Um, also, you can now share to Daily Motion if that's uh, if that's a service that you want to use. I personally never used it before, but you know, never say never, I guess. And finally, we've got Remote Play. Obviously, there aren't really any changes to the remote play settings in the uh, in the app itself. However, you can now remote play to a PC or a Mac if you have one set up on your network. Uh, the installer should be going live around the same time that the firmware goes live as well, so keep your eyes peeled for that. If you've got a PC on your network, you'll be able to play. Thanks for joining me, guys. Uh, once again, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe, all the rest of that, and join us again next time on nextgengamingblog.com.